I'm going to take you through the schematic of the recirculating shower system and explain a little more detail about each one of the components. First, it starts out with the fresh water tanks. I expect there will be three 16-gallon tanks in this van build. Each tank has two one and a half inch NPT fittings and two half inch female NPT fittings. They all come from a company called ClassACustoms.com and they will, as the name suggests, customize these tanks to your liking. They'll put sensors in or provide you with the sensors or they'll put fittings in different places depending on your needs. As the water flows through the half inch PEX pipe, the first thing it meets is an electronic ball valve. The electronic ball valve allows you to open up the valve at the flip of a switch. Now, I made a mistake when I bought my first electronic ball valve. I bought one that was a three wire system and it required one switch to open and a different switch to close. What you want to look for is a two wire electronic ball valve that has auto return. That's the key thing to look for when you're looking at the description. You want auto return for your ball valves. Then the water flows through a manual shutoff. I highly recommend that you put these shutoffs any place you think you might need them to do maintenance or change something out in your system. It's easier to put them in while you're building it than it is to add them later. Flowing through the manual shutoff, the water flows across the van into the five gallon tank for the shower. The water goes through that tank into a spin down filter. The spin down filter I'm using is an eye spring whole house sediment filter. It has both one inch male and three quarter inch female fittings on both sides. That spin down filter protects the pump from any large debris. I recommend you use a 200 or 500 micron filter at that point. It protects the diaphragm inside the pump. Leaving the spin down filter, a flexible pipe connects to the pump. You must always use flexible pipes when connecting to your pumps. If you used a rigid pipe, you would end up with leaks because of the vibration of the pump and of course the vibration of the entire van. I used three identical pumps for this van build. Each one is a C-Flow 12 volt, three gallon per minute pump. It will provide 55 PSI. It has variable flow with bypass technology to reduce cycling. And when it gets up to pressure, it automatically shuts itself off. They're also capable of running dry without hurting themselves, which is a key thing to look for. And it sure doesn't hurt that they come with a four-year warranty. Hopefully, I'll never have to see how good that warranty is. After leaving that pump, it goes through another flexible pipe into the filters. I purchased two housings and connected them together. Both of these housings have a little red button on top that's the pressure relief. It's a really good idea to have that. It makes unscrewing these filters and changing them out a lot easier to be able to press that button and release the pressure. Inside the filter housings, there is a sediment filter and a carbon filter that cleans the water. And then it goes through another manual shutoff valve and then it goes through the UV sterilizer. The UV sterilizer housing is made of stainless steel. A UV light eliminates viruses and bacteria, E. coli, from the water. It's the last thing that happens before that water goes through the shower. There's a ballast on this UV sterilizer that if the light bulb fails or doesn't work any longer, it will sound an audible alarm. 
remember UV light is harmful to the eyes and skin so you don't really want to look at the light to see if it's on at any time. After it passes through the UV sterilizer the water wise off, water goes up to the shower valve for cold and another pipe goes to the water tank which heats the water. This water tank I chose was a Bosch four gallon mini hot water heater. It uses the same amount of electricity as the two and a half gallon tank. I chose the four gallon because we like to take long hot showers. It is a physically just a little bit larger but we thought it was worth it. The water goes up to the shower valves. I mounted the shower valves high so that we wouldn't bump into them when we were taking a shower. Also, the shower head sprayer has an on-off switch on it, so you can quickly turn the shower off right from that switch so you don't spray water someplace inside your van. The shower goes down the drain, and then it goes into a 10-gallon gray tank. From the gray tank, it goes through a flexible pipe into another pump. That pump pumps the water through a check valve. That check valve is there so that water doesn't flow and fill the gray tank instead of filling the five gallon tank when you're putting new water into the shower system. So it flows through that check valve, through a manual shutoff, and back into the five gallon tank to be used again. And the cycle happens all over. Now, if I wanna empty this water and put fresh water in, I simply close the manual shutoff, then run the pump. I turn the electronic ball valve on and the pump quickly will help push the water out of the van and that's the complete shower system. I hope this helps. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments and I'll try to answer them the best I can. Please be sure to watch the other video that will show you the actual shower system and all its components in working order. Thank you for watching.